Welcome to prayer meeting tonight. Our devotional thought is division is not Christian. And we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18 to see if this is what the Bible teaches. Paul writing to the church here, uh, verse 10 he says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So after talking about the grace of God in the previous verses, Paul quickly changes the subject to deal with something that will hinder the grace of God being present in the church. He writes, I plead, that's that word he used, right? I plead with you. In other words, hey guys, this is important. Pay attention. So he not only pleads as an apostle, but he also pleads in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, emphasizing the importance of what he's about to say, which is that you all speak the same thing. The same thing about which he is concerned is having a basic agreement on the essentials of the Christian faith. Now he's not pleading for agreement on things of lesser importance, but he wants us to have agreement on the essentials of the Christian faith. And in case we do not know what he means about speaking the same thing, he defines the same thing as there being no divisions among you. So that's what it means to speak the same thing. No divisions among us. In other words, do not divide over the essentials of the Christian faith. And also, do not divide over the non-essentials, which in reality is something Christians are too prone to do. Now, Adam Clark agrees strongly with the Apostle Paul here. He wrote, the members of the Church of God should labor to be of the same mind and to speak the same thing in order to prevent divisions which always hinder the work of God. On every essential doctrine of the gospel, all genuine Christians agree. Why then need religious communion be interrupted? This general agreement is all that the apostle can have in view. For it cannot be expected that any number of men should in every respect perfectly coincide in their views of all the minor points on which an exact conformity in sentiment is impossible to minds so variously constituted as those of the human race. <laughs> he says a lot of words there, but he says we just don't all think alike on everything. <laughs> That's what he meant, right? Angels must thus agree who see nothing through an imperfect or false medium, but to man this is impossible. Therefore, men should bear with each other and not be so ready to imagine that none have the truth of God, but they and their party. Amen. Where Clark mentions parties, I could just go on to list the names of denominations and associations and conventions and fellowships that believe they have the final definition of every doctrine and are the right and only way to God. But that would be futile and only put people on the defense. So the apostle tells us to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. What does that mean? We read the words, but what does it mean? Well, it means that as Christians, we are to be focused on the same thing. And that one thing is the work of the gospel. Okay? As Christians, we are called to work together to bring people to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are to let God work where 
and how he chooses to work and to use whomever he chooses. So are we willing to do that? That's the question. So we have challenges in the work church world today that did not exist when Paul wrote this letter. In our city, we have any number of different churches, all of which believe essentially the same important things about the gospel. But we are not of the same mind and judgment on many of the details. That division is bad enough on its own, and it works against the gospel. But what is even worse is division that would be in a single congregation. Paul says we're not to be divided as Christians at large, and especially in the gospel workplace, the local congregation. Verses 11 and 12. He says here, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Contentions and quarrels were dividing this one congregation. Let me tell you, this is something the devil rejoices in because it div diverts the attention of the people from God's work, and ultimately they end up doing the devil's work. Now what made the division worse in Corinth was they were dividing not so much over doctrines or practices, but over personalities. Truth is permanent. People are only temporary. Why destroy God's work over something that is going to pass away anyway? As much as we may love and appreciate those that minister to us, we are not to follow preachers or teachers. We are to follow whom? Christ and Him only. You, as an individual, had better know what teachings make up the faith so that you can follow the right preacher as he follows Christ. And that is a responsibility that God puts on you. But as you follow your minister, keep in line with Christ, so that if the minister gets out of line, you will still be following Christ. Remember Paul's admonition to the church in chapter 11, verse 1. He said, and you should follow my example just as I follow Christ. Okay? And if his example goes off of Christ, you stay with Jesus. Verses 13 to 17, he asks, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I baptized in my own name. Oh yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Well, the truth is we tend to have loyalties to people we like or that have been a blessing to us, but we must still follow Christ, not the man through whom he blesses us. The preacher may have preached the gospel of salvation from sin to you, but he did not die for your sins. Christ did. And your loyalty must always be to Christ first and foremost. And finally, in verse 18, he writes, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, 
but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is through obeying the message of the gospel of Christ that we are indeed saved from sin. The ministers do not save us. And you are neither saved nor unsaved because of who your minister is. You are saved from sin only by God's power. That power to be saved from sin and to live without having to commit sin is accessed only through obeying the message of the gospel. You see, the cross is the bridge by which God reaches to fallen mankind and lifts us up out of sin and brings us into his kingdom. Division does not do this. Division does not help it. In fact, it is the reason why some people have no use for the church, the gospel, or Christians at all. So, always remember that division is not Christian. And if it is not Christian, what is it? Think on that. Amen.